welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining us this uh, Tuesday evening uh, for um, our next installment, February installment of the ISTE EdTech Coaches Network Playground webinar series. We are excited that you're taking a little bit of your time out of your Tuesday night to join us. So a couple of quick housekeeping items before we get started. Um, this is your 2017-18 uh, leadership team for the EdTech Coaches Network. At any time, if you'd like to see more of something going on with the EdTech Coaches, you'd like to um, get involved, uh, see less of something, whatever it may be, please, please reach out, give us your feedback, because we really want to hear that this is your PLN and we try to do everything possible to, to offer you uh, professional development opportunities to meet your needs as a coach. And we can't do that if we don't hear from you. Um, and just FYI, I am Katie Seamer. That's me up at the top of the screen there. So uh, thanks for joining us. So to make sure, I will paste all of the links into the chat in just a minute so that you have these, but make sure that you're connected with us everywhere. Um, first and foremost, the PLN homepage. You do have to be a member of ISTE, but with that, you can join any of the 24 PLNs for free with your membership. Uh, I am partial to the EdTech Coaches PLN, of course. But that PLN homepage, we have discussion boards going on. We have a library of resources. That's where the archive link will be posted to this webinar in that uh, library area of the EdTech Coaches SD Connects PLN homepage, um, all sorts of stuff. Our discussion boards are very active. Um, so, so please, if at any point you have a question, you need feedback, whatever it may be, don't hesitate to reach out in those discussion boards of the SD Connects homepage. And then of course, I would say our second most active space is on Twitter. The official PLN uh, Twitter handle is at EdTechCoaches. And so you'll want to make sure to follow our account. And then you can also share what's going on, ask questions, resources with the hashtag ETCoaches. And if you search that on Twitter now, you'll notice that our book study is currently going on. Um, I think it's actually about ready to wrap up. Um, and we do have our, while I'm kind of touching on that, the um, book study webinar with the author will actually be this Thursday evening at 8 p.m. So I think Pam, who's in charge of that, is joining the webinar. If she does not throw out the link to register for that in the chat, I will find it and do it at some point throughout the webinar if you're participating in the book study and lost that link. We do have Google+. Plus. One of our presenters, Adam, is very active in our Google Plus community, so thank you, Adam. And then we also have a Voxer group. You can contact Lisa Hervey if you'd like to join our Voxer group. And then, of course, we have a Remind group where you can sign up to receive reminder text notifications for our monthly Twitter chats, which happen on the last Tuesday of every month at 1 and 8 p.m. Same chat, two different times to accommodate different time zones using the hashtag ETCoaches. So lots of places that you can connect with coaches. For those of you who are tuning in for our first, your first ETC webinar, just a very quick background. Um, these short and sweet webinars started as a result of our playground series two years ago. So if, if you've ever been to ISTE's conference, then you'll know that the EdTech Coaches Network hosts a playground every year. It's essentially just uh, mini poster sessions or mini sessions that kind of all happen concurrently around a general topic. Ours, of course, is coaching. And so what we have done as a leadership team is we take the most popular, well-received playground presentations, and we ask those folks to present that same information again throughout the year in these monthly webinars. So we know not everyone can make it to the conference. It's a big uh, financial commitment. And then we also know that if you do get to the conference, that you don't get a chance to make it to everything. So we are trying to extend that conference experience for everyone um, by presenting these webinars. So tonight, of course, is the walking coach, Escape the Office, uh, and I am super excited about this one. So you can register for uh, our March and April webinar at that link you see there. Again, I'm gonna share all of these links in the chat when I am finished with the introductions here in just a minute. Um, we don't do one in May because May is a little crazy for everyone and then June is conference time. So we will pick back up next September after this April. Oop. 
Here we go. So like I said, tonight's webinar is The Walking Coach, Escape the Office. And I am uh, personally very excited. I've been looking forward to this webinar all year long. We have Adam Juarez and Catherine Goriette. And Adam is a 612 technology integration coach for Cutler or Rossi Joint Unified School District. He leads teachers in implementing technology into their lessons through one-on-one -on -one coaching, demo lessons, and professional development. He is the founder of the Cardinal Innovation Center, a student-centered virtual and physical learning space designed to empower. In addition, Adam is a Google certified trainer and innovator, the Sydney 2017 cohort. He is a 2017 Q Leroy Finkel Fellowship finalist and co-founder of the Twitter chat, hashtag CB Tech Talk. He frequently presents at ISTE, Q, EdTech Team, and Cruzy Center for Innovation events. Catherine is an educational consultant for technology and integrated studies at Tulare County Office of Education, where she works to develop professional capacity of administrators, coaches, and teachers. Formerly, Catherine was a curriculum support provider, coaching teachers to promote student digital literacy. Catherine is a Google certified trainer and innovator who is passionate about sparking innovation through collaborative connections. She has been featured as a blogger for EdTech Team and Q. Catherine is a lead writer for the California Department of Education Computer Science Standard and is a region lead for the California Digital Learning Collaborative. And both of their websites are there on the screen for you. I will share those in the chat as well too um, so that you can find those. So without further ado, um, oh, sorry, actually one more thing because since these are our playground webinar series, our playground proposals actually opened today. So you can actually submit your playground proposal to uh, present through ISTE's Ed Tech Coaches Network Playground. I will share all of that information once Adam and Catherine are finished presenting. So as a little hook to keep you till the end, I will share it then. So without further ado, I would like to turn it over uh, to Adam and Catherine to take it away. What's up, everybody? We are very excited to be here. Been looking forward to this for a while. But we are ready to go and want to share our um, experiences as tech coaches. Absolutely. That's right. So well, we've uh, already been introduced, so no we'll go further ahead and ado. Let's go ahead. Share the screen and there. Here we go. Working? Over here. Go back here. Yeah. This one. Push oh, button, oh, wrong button, my bad. Sorry, fail forward, as Troy right. Orlando would say. It's been a long day. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh, here we go. And. Let me see here. Here we go. Here we go. And. Where's the arrow? There we go. Oh, oh it's it. There right. it is. Perfect. All, All right. right. So. Sorry about that. All right. So, here we go. All right. So, we've already been introduced, but again, I am Adam. And I am Catherine. And. Collectively, we are Atticat, which is a little play on our uh, on our uh, first names here. Whenever we co-present, so let's go ahead and get this party started. So again, um, while you are learning with us today, um, share all your learnings on uh, social media. Use the appropriate hashtags: hashtag uh, ET Coaches, uh, our hashtag uh, CV Tech Talk, which we are the uh, proud uh, co-founders of that hashtag. CV stands for the Central Valley of here in California. We designed this uh, this Twitter chat to be a way to build bridges between all the rural communities out here in Central California. Um, for those of you not familiar with California, we don't live in the California you see on TV. No, we're not by Hollywood or the beach. Yeah, we don't have many. Uh, yeah, honestly, if we dropped you out of a parachute and you landed in where we where we we live, uh, you probably think you're somewhere in the Midwest. So a lot of very rural and um, a lot of great stuff going on in all these small towns so we built cv tech talk to kind of uh build bridges to connect everybody and share all the cool things going on and uh it's uh grown to be uh every week and we, we haven't even missed a week in almost two years now and it's grown to have a following across the world now that, that was unexpected but very welcome yeah and um uh, part of the reason that we really wanted to start cv tech talk um helps uh really helped us to want to develop this session because um, we really believe in collaborative connections and the fact that we as ed tech coaches cannot be everywhere. 
Um, and so we knew there were great things happening in classrooms, but we knew that we'd actually be out in classrooms to get uh, to know which conversations to get started with teachers and such. Yeah, so make sure you uh, follow us on Twitter. We will you follow us. We would love to follow everybody back. Uh, you see our Twitter handles at the bottom of pretty much every every uh, slide you're going to see here. Follow us on Twitter. Um, we even uh, preview today's session with a couple periscopes. That's right. So if you follow us on Twitter and look back at our profile, you can see some of the periscopes kind of putting into uh, action what we we're kind of preaching today. So follow us on Twitter. CV Tech Talk has a presence on Google Plus, Facebook group, and Voxer. So be sure to connect with us as well as on the on our website, cvtechtalk.org. All right. So what are we talking about here? I don't know if any of you are Walking Dead fans. We are. We certainly are. And while we are not asking you to be zombies, we no. do want you to be walkers. Yes. Um, we believe that it's, we have found in our experience that walking is not only good for your health That's because right. sitting is the new smoking, as they say, but um, it's a great way to uh, change the culture of a school and really um, have a big impact. Yeah, um, I leave a little graph here. You should probably spend um, one of the goals we set for ourselves is to be 80% of the day out and about, boots on the ground, out there, you know, where the, where the rubber meets the road. Not sitting in my office all day uh, making uh, making PowerPoints and developing PD. I'm out there seeing uh, on the front line, seeing what's needed. And some some people say, uh, well, first of all, I don't know anyone that would want to be in their office all day long. Yeah, I hate it. Yeah, uh, because really, you want to be with students. Like one of the things that I hear when people first become coaches for new coaches is, oh, "I'm out of the classroom and I miss the students." You know, because we are out in classrooms so often. Um, we're modeling lessons. We're 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 not just that though. We're we're, just, we're walking, yep. um, and so we don't miss the students as much as we would if um, we were in our office all day long. We'll give you some t tips though, because some of you may be saying, "Well, that sounds great, Catherine, but do you realize I get a hundred emails a day, or do you realize no one's booking me for appointments, so they don't want me in your, their classroom?" We have tips for that as well, because guess what? We have faced the very same things. That's right. So again, as Catherine just said, you're one of the first ways that you kind of get stuck in your desk, stuck in your office, is he's like, well, I have so many emails I, I, I got to respond to. Well, um, a trip, a trick I learned from Catherine was, you know, you, you ha have laptop, we'll travel. Take your laptop, just walk into a classroom and just sit down. You have no, just making yourself visible right there is, is a lot bigger than you might realize. Just sit down and do your work. Um, in someone else's classroom, and you're you, you have your presence there. A lot of teachers, especially the ones who are struggling with classroom management, just love having another adult in the room, and it, 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 that is a real simple way just to begin helping. Yes, I would say some teachers though will be scared if you do this. That's true. With your because they'll think you're evaluating you. So I began starting this with teachers I had built some trust with, mm -hmm. and said, "Hey, just so you know, you know, spread the word. I'm going to be e answering emails in classrooms." Um, doing some work in classrooms because I'm sick of being in the office all day long. And so um, that way that lowers that effective filter for those teachers. So they feel like, okay, if she's coming in, she's not just evaluating me. The other thing that, that surprised me when I first started doing this is that I got less emails mm -hmm. because here's what happens when you're walking in classrooms, teachers start asking you questions while you're there every once in a while or and or you notice things before they will go wrong you notice oh there's a light bulb in that projector that's going to be going out maybe i should try to um, get that taken care of for that teacher oh um your your projector all of a sudden isn't working because it's not plugged in or whatever it happens to be let me show you how to fix that so you catch things um the other thing that surprised me and and you kind of talked a little bit about this adam is discipline problems at our whole school mm -hmm. i was a, i was a, um in in the past i was a uh coach at a single school site and the discipline problems went down a lot with one more adult in the classroom um but even even in a uh now in my current job where i have many school sites that i'm um serving it's still it still makes a big difference when you walk in that room yeah. just an extra adult so long story short be mobile we have mm -hmm. we have we have the technology it can be done mm -hmm. so here's some of the tricks that we like to use um to get into the classroom we have two kind of mantras here be forgetful but also at the same time be unforgettable 
So being forgetful, uh, purposefully forgetting things. Um, I'm notorious for leaving things everywhere I go. It's a it's a running joke in my family. I visit anywhere, I'm going to leave something behind. That actually has helped me in my job because, <laughs> I mean, I have my sunglasses, my cup of coffee, and I'm bound to leave something behind in the classroom. And as I found, that's given many teachers a reason to call me. And it gives me a reason to go back into that classroom. And many times as I'm going back later in the day or the next day to retrieve my items, I find something that that, that I can do. That I, I find a, a chance, to, just an odd chance here to to plan with a teacher or help them with something they need. So my uh, my forgetfulness, it, well, it, I, I would say it's purposely forgetting now. Mm -hmm. In the past, it was just me being absent-minded. It's just kind of who I am. But now I purposely forget things, and it's really uh, – starting to uh, pick up a lot of business. Yeah, absolutely. Same thing happened to me where it was accidental. And I noticed, you know, I'd, I'd get a text from a teacher. Oh, you left your coffee mug here. Oh, what if I did that in classrooms where I want to visit again, where I want to see what's going on uh, again? And by the way, why is it important that we be in classrooms? Um, what happens is, especially for our teachers that are not signing up to have us come in, uh, many times they don't feel that what we are training and what we are offering to coach them on is relevant. And so if we can see the context of what they're actually teaching in the classroom, it's a lot easier for us to have an in. We can say, you know what, I noticed just today, I said, I noticed that you're working on organization of your writing. You're using color coding. That's great. Have you considered using Google Slides? and using different backgrounds, the kids, you know, now it makes sense because it's within the context of what I'm already teaching. I did the exact same thing today. I'm, I walked into a, uh, actually caught a teacher on our prep, uh, one of our science teachers, and they're really big into these spiral notebooks they call interactive notebooks. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not a big fan of those, but I offered to say, hey, you know what, just think how much time you spend evaluating those notebooks. What if you had the kids create these notebooks as a Google site, think how, how much more dynamic that the student artifacts could be, and how and I showed her ways that it, it's just going to make your make your life a lot easier as far as managing them. And lo and behold, next week we, we have a we have a demo lesson and some some training to go on to get those kids to transform their interactive notebooks into Google Sites. Now, Adam, if you would have said, "Hey, Teacher A, uh, I want to teach you about Google Sites," they probably would have said no. Yeah. But because you have attached it to that context of what they were teaching, that's why it works. So again, you got to be unforgettable, um, and uh, I didn't really realize it, but a friend of mine, Brian Costello, I was talking to him last week, and he said, "Yeah, that time I came and visited, uh, you showed me some of the classrooms that you work with." He said, "He's like, dude, every classroom you walked into, everything like stopped. All the kids were like, oh, the the tech coach is here. What what, what cool thing does he have next for us?'" Mm. Um, that didn't happen overnight. Um, what I did when I first started becoming a tech coach. Um, I remember going to a lot of these tech conferences and every conference has a photo booth. So when the kids were done, I used it as an incentive. I made, I, I took some butcher paper and put some, some cool backgrounds with some of the apps, the Google apps that I was training the kids on. And when they were done, they got to do a little photo booth. And th that right there made me memorable and unforgettable. So the kids know oh, he's coming or we're, we're going to do something really cool. And that really helped me build a lot of, I guess, a lot, a lot of street cred with the students. Mm -hmm. And with the students are all in, if you, if you get to the students, you get them to buy in, the teachers are, are not going to be that far behind. Well, and the great thing is then you have the students asking the teachers, right. hey, when's the tech coach coming? When's the tech coach coming? And so they kind of, that, that helps your cause in essence. Yeah. So some more tricks to get in the classroom. You have to to let the teachers know that you are on the same team, that you are like a lateral here. Here we see this GIF here, a very famous GIF. Um, if you are a Buffalo Bills fan, you might want to turn your head. But this is the play known as the Music City Miracle, where, where with time expiring, the Tennessee Titans returned a, a lateral uh, uh, kickoff to win the game. Um, because as, as, as coaches, we, we are teachers. We're not administrators. And a lot of times they think that we're admin. So many times you walk into the, to a classroom and they give that deer in the headlights look because they think you're here to evaluate them. But you have to know that this uh, that we are lateral. We're on the same we're we're on the same level here. I'm I'm not higher up on the pecking order. That and that right there really uh, helps really build that that relationship and rapport with teachers. And one thing I always do. Um, I was at a school site today. Um, 
And I literally, during before uh, during my lunch, I went and bought Post-it notes. I know you, you might say you're a tech coach, Catherine. Why are you buying paper? But I, I went and bought Post-it notes because I wanted to praise people when I was walking in their classrooms. They didn't know when I was coming. They didn't know that I was, if I would come into their classroom or not. Um, and I need them to know that I'm not there to evaluate. I need them to know that I recognize what they're doing because that's going to build the trust and then they will welcome me back. So, um, you know, that, that gif there where with the well done, you know, I, I did go ahead and do that, um, with the post-it notes. And I saw when I was, um, a coach at a single school site, I saw post-it notes on people's desks two years later still had them there nice. um and that's that that's that's really what we want we want to build up our people not tear them down i also had a coach i went walking with actually so to speak and i saw him look at a teacher and just give a thumbs up you know you don't have to necessarily use post-its maybe you want to just give thumbs up maybe you want to use a google form or email whatever you do just make sure you're praising your people for what they're they're doing and when we say praising your people it's not just the teachers it's the students too um Kids know when I'm coming in, if I, if, they, if I bring them in, into my room or I'm going in, I'm pushing into their room, that what, what they're working on, what they're producing, I'm taking pictures of and I'm posting on social media. And I tell kids, hey, before I, I – first I ask their permission if they, they don't mind me posting the picture of their work. And I say, hey, you want me to make you Twitter famous? And, <laughs> and so what I've done, I've taken pictures of kids who are learning how to sketch notes, kids are, who are learning how to do book snaps or any of the initiatives I'm trying to push. and they know like, oh man, somebody from across the world might see this. And I tell them like a minute later, oh, so-and-so from 2,000 miles away just liked your, liked your work. And they, it's such a huge incentive for them. Like they're, they, you, see the, you see that their eyes light up. So any way that you can praise them, and, and a lot of times I'll, I'll talk, when I, when I tweet out these pictures of their work, I always, always mention the name of the teacher. So the teacher and the kids are getting love um, when, when we do this. We have a, good, a question here I wanted to address, Adam, um, yes. from um, Kara. Hope I'm um, saying that right. She says that she is new to a district that doesn't and doesn't know many of the teachers, and that there are 26 different buildings. Ooh. So she's talking about getting her foot in the door. And um, I would say that one of the things that um, I've seen done um, again, I was at a smaller school site at first, um, but even now I've only been. Um, the school I was at today, I've been there how many times this year? Maybe five days total. Yeah. And I'm already um, being welcomed into their classrooms. Um, part of it is the way you you learn to build trust quickly. Um, but I would also say sometimes I've I've met people, coaches who actually have a schedule, so because it becomes a little overwhelming, and so they'll say, you know what, on Monday, uh, if I don't have any appointments. I'm walking classrooms and this is the building I'm hitting yep. on Tuesday. This is the building I'm hitting. Um, you know, you might also want to ask your administrators who are those uh, teachers that would be open and would be willing to share. I know because I was only at this certain school site I was at today a, a few days for the year and it was new for me this year. Um, what I did was I told the administrator, ask your teachers to share um, what they felt about the coaching, the in, cl in classroom coaching that I did with them. And he said, that's what really did it is when other teachers started to share in a staff meeting. Oh, it was great when Catherine came because I learned this. Oh, that onsite coaching was, was great. He said that that's what really kind of built that. Um, so hopefully that gives you some ideas there. Um, but yeah, that, that, and that first year, that first year coaching, if it's a new site, it's not easy. You get, you got to really build that trust. Make sure they know that you are on the same team and that you are there to support them and not to evaluate. So that kind of leads into our next slide here. Some more of our tricks to get into the classroom. Um, making yourself available. Mm -hmm. My my teachers. I've really because we're a Google district. Um, I've one of the first things I, I trained all the teachers on was how to use Google Hangouts. And I tell them that's the easiest, fastest way to get a hold of me. Doesn't matter what device I'm on, if I'm on my tablet, I'm on my phone, my Chromebook, my MacBook, doesn't matter. Hangouts is always open, and I'm just an instant message away. And teachers, I mean, all day, you can hear the Hangouts little beep all day because they are they know that I'm available. So let them know you're available. Um, again, this is on this is up to you, but if you, it's very powerful if you actually give them your cell phone number. Mm -hmm. Very powerful because, I mean, that that's a very personal thing, and the fact that you are able and you're willing to give – some of that personal information to them, that's going to make them more likely to, to get a hold of you. So I, I get Google Hangouts IMs all day. 
and I get texts, mm -hmm. either or. But just long story short, letting, letting them know that you are available is uh, just something that simple. It goes a long way. Well, and what I would do, I'd give my cell phone number, and I would respond. I would respond to text messages almost immediately, but just because I want to, teachers to know that if I'm giving you that cell phone number, I actually mean to answer. But many times I'd say, you know, great question. I'll get back to you in half an hour or yeah. we'll talk about this Friday or whatever it happens to be. But just the fact that you answer right away saying I'll think about it or whatever makes a big difference for them. And I know, uh, you know, Kara says she's going to support 26 buildings. And a lot of times as a tech coach, especially in the beginning, they, they just, they, they need help with some kind of tool, how mm -hmm. to do something. And it's hard to be so many places at once. One of my biggest tricks I learned early was I, I get an email or I get, a, I get a message. I will respond to them with a screencast mm -hmm. where I'm, I'm demoing it. So I don't have to, if I'm in the middle of something, I can pause for a minute, do a quick screencast, send it, send it to them, and they have it. And it's a resource that they, mm -hmm. I don't have to keep on going back and forth. And they really appreciate that. The other thing that's great, if you're a walker and you're walking classrooms, you know what other teachers can help them. Mm -hmm. And so when you get a question, because you've walked classrooms, you know, oh, you really want to know about Nearpod. Guess what? Two doors down. You need to ask that teacher. They've got it down. And so that can help maximize your efficiency because you cannot be everywhere at once. But when you walk, you learn who are those leaders that you can build from within? Who are those teacher leaders so you can really maximize your efficiency? So that leads in perfectly to our tools for efficiency. Um, we're kind of Google geeks here. Mm -hmm. um, but not everyone is, and that's okay. Yes. Whatever, whatever your tool of choice is, notifications are your friends. You need to really make use of that calendar. The Google Calendar is one of my biggest tools here. Um, I have it. You know, I have a form that's embedded onto my website where teachers can book me, and it, it saves me a lot of the trouble having to go around mm -hmm. and do the booking myself. But uh, notifications are definitely your friends. I've, I know people in the past say, "Oh, my phone's always bugging me," but you know what? It's what, if your phone's bugging you, that means that you're, you're, you're doing a pretty good job. That business is picking up. Mm -hmm. And um, with this slide here, you'll see some teachers that are planning. Um, and so something that I, I was at a small school site, so I had prep, prep times and schedules memorized. But I know what Adam does because he's at multiple school sites is he's got, he has, I, I was very impressed by this. He has a notification telling him this department's on prep right now. These are the departments that, and so he can go in there and if you're, if you catch them while they're planning, a lot of times that's a great in for you as well. Yeah. Um, again, going back to the calendar, um, I took the, um, initiative to actually, um, <clears throat> to, uh, to create a whole calendar, separate calendar for the bell schedules and which period I, in the description, I put the names of the teachers who are on prep that period. So I have it set up where I go, where I get alerted three minutes before the end of each period, where what the next period is going to be, and I can click on it and just at a glance see who's on prep. Uh, that was that was really really helpful. So we have a question from Joseph. He says, for the form, do you use Choice Eliminator or any add-ons to send it right to your calendar? Uh, yeah, Joseph, I'm using uh, Formula. That's a good one. Yep, it's Formula, and there's um, I, I forgetting the um, not just Formula, but at the top of my head, uh, I think it's called Eventomatic. That's the one I use that's embedded on the website and it, it'll, it'll populate on my calendar. So that's really, uh, really useful. I will say something new in, um, in Google calendar now is the, uh, only if you've got a, an, an education account or work account, not Gmail, but, um, the, uh, appointment slots. Yes. And that's actually that's really cool. I'm going to start using that, um, next week or in the next couple weeks. And what you can do is publish that calendar and people can um, sign up for slots that way, and and it's automated. It's all done for you. So I'm I i do not I haven't tried it myself yet, so I can't speak to any glitches or anything like that. But it's it's new and it looks promising. Yeah, just so I'm uh, I'm, I'm clear, uh, Joseph. Uh, Formula I actually use for my actionable feedback, but uh, Eventomatic is the one I use uh, for people to sign up on my website. That's a very simple to use. And I think uh, Katie has just put a link to it to it on the Chrome Web Store. Yes, awesome. Thank you, Katie. So again, speaking of forms? Yep, so speaking of forms, again, automating your feedback, like I said, um, using a, a formula is a great way to mm -hmm. automate your feedback. Um, so the way I use it, um, either on my phone or a tablet, 
I have the form already set up in, I, I walk into a classroom and I use the form as, as a note taking tool. And when I, upon submit, it automatically emails the teacher that, that I was, I was, I was watching and, and just observing and emails them my feedback. Um, I use, I use two different forms. One is to actually give them feedback. The other one is to kind of keep track of, of who I've, uh, who I've seen. Mm -hmm. So there, there's a really a lot of ways you, you can use forms as a walking coach. I would say with forms, unless you are required to use a specific form for your district, what I learned is the more simple, the better. Mm -hmm. uh, if And be transparent about what you're looking for. So we prefer to focus on the four C's yep. um, because it's pretty much in all content areas and, and makes sense to teachers. It's simple. Um, but and then and then a place for always have a place in there where you can actually write in comments as well. Yeah. Um, and uh, also, I something that this is just a pet peeve when people say on a forum like a week like people's weaknesses. Yeah. Say opportunity no. for growth. Don't don't ever mention weaknesses. That just doesn't. That, for no me, one wants to hear for that. For me, weakness. it's 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 purely for observation purposes. I say well, what what I saw mm -hmm. and what some potential next steps could be. Yeah, perfect. It's, it's that simple, and you know, teachers really really appreciate that. All right, we were just reading the comments oh, there. There we go. All right, so Google Hangouts. Oh, you kind of already addressed yeah, this, so you so, can talk about it again yeah, briefly. Yeah, a little, more, little bit more, more depth here. Sure. Um, Google Hangouts, like I said, is a great way to, to be always available for teachers because you can't be everywhere at once, but mm -hmm. this really kind of, kind of it keeps your, your foot in the door in a, a, lot, a lot of places simultaneously. Um, actually, today, um, Google Hangouts, I was coaching a – an art teacher on Google Hangouts, and she's like, "Yeah, you know, my projector, it's not very good. The lighting's terrible in my room. Mm -hmm. I want kids to be able to see." So I said, "Well, why don't you uh, rock some some Google Hangouts on air?" <laughs> and she's like, "How?" She's like, "Yeah, if you just create the link and you share it with with the students, they can watch you live. So you can demonstrate right there in front of the room. Mm -hmm. If they can't see it because it's really hard to see her demonstrating, then they can watch right there on a Chromebook. On their so screens, yeah. again." Um, Hangouts is just so, so versatile. You know, I was in a district um, where they did PD for all all primary grade levels simultaneously through Hangouts, through a live Hangout. Yeah. And that was pretty cool. But same idea. You're basically maximizing, you're cloning yourself. Yeah. You um, know? Pretty much what we're doing right now, in, uh, right now on this webinar, um, mm -hmm. I'm sharing my screen. Yeah. Uh, because I, I serve three different school sites, um, I can't be everywhere at once. So mm -hmm. I may be at one, I, and instead of jumping in the car and driving across town to that other site, I can start to hang out with that teacher, share my screen, and walk them through it. Or if they have like, I don't know, um, I'm not sure what to do with this uh, on this site or this uh, web page that I'm on, they share their screen, and I, I just talk them through it. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's just so powerful. I will say I don't think we have a, a slide about this, Adam. But something that I think is important too is once we you start creating, we're talking about uh, doing Google Hangouts and doing things live. But once you start creating screencasts and tutorials for teachers, I know you have a lot on your website where yeah. they can search. I've started um, folders with districts I've worked in so that all of the resources that we're creating and the tutorials I make to help them use those resources are all in one spot. So whether it's in a site, on, on a site, or in a, a folder, that can be really helpful because otherwise you're gonna start creating the same thing again and again. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, again, we're big Google geeks, but Google, a Google site is a great way, place to house all of your, uh, all of the, uh, <clears throat> the screencasts that you make and, and how-to videos. It's a great place to put it. It's very user friendly. So if you're not familiar with that, feel free to reach out to us, and we mm -hmm. can share some more uh, some examples of what we've done. Um, Google Classroom is huge, um, not just working out with kids, but with teachers that you serve. Um, what I a lot of times uh, teachers will have uh, questions like, "I'm not sure how to do this in Classroom." I tell teachers, uh, "Go to the About tab, add me as a co-teacher, and then I mm -hmm. can see it all." And I can help, especially if I'm co-teaching a lesson, it makes it, I, I can remotely co-teach it. And, and all these things we're talking about for efficiency allow us to have the time mm -hmm. to walk. Yep. That, that's really what it's all about. Yes. I mean, we're talking a lot of things that sound like remote and sound like we're in our office doing these things. We can do them outside, yep. you know, in, in the staff room real quick, um, ahead of time, store all that stuff 
all those things that aren't uh, that are kind of more entry level, so to speak. Then when you walk, yeah. you're able to create you, you're able to spend more time with people. I mean, I, I've been you know, co-teaching a lesson in someone else's classroom and, you know, the kids will start working independently and then I'll get them, I'll get a notification on my phone mm -hmm. about from classroom from another, another class. And I can, I can provide support that way. Mm -hmm. and so I'm, I'm, or send them a link to a, a screencast you already did. Yep. So yeah. Hey, Google classroom, very, very powerful. All right. So I've heard this. Well, I don't have any appointments, Catherine. So I, I just stay in my office. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I don't buy that because really um, you're there for teachers and for students. And so I know it's hard to walk into a classroom when they're not expecting you, but I'm telling you that it's worth it. It is worth it. Um, Michael Fullen in the, um, wrote a book, he wrote many books, but in the book, the principal, he talks about using the group to move the group. So even if you have people that aren't setting appointments, if you can get a core group of people that are excited about it and start spreading the word, just like happened with me today, you will be able to visit just about every classroom without getting that deer in the headlights look. I'm, I'm doing the exact same thing right now. Uh, I'm, I'm at our middle school. I, I taught there for nine years before I became a tech coach. So I, I'm already part of the furniture over there. I don't have trouble getting, get, uh, getting booked up at the middle school mm -hmm. but at our high school where um they're a little uh, not as familiar with me i it, it's been moving moving a lot a lot slower than i would like but like michael fullen says use the group to move, move the group mm -hmm. go where you're needed i have a slow i guess like to say a cult following right now mm -hmm. of about half a dozen teachers that are constantly booking me for things and slowly but surely the word's getting out about the value that i'm bringing and they they tell their PLCs about it. So slowly, I'm getting play, I'm getting calls and appointments from sources that I, I hadn't done before. Mm -hmm. So you, you have to be patient, but really, you have to kind of really glom on to the, to that one core group of people that that really see your value and let them be like your free advertiser. They're your messengers. That being said, don't be afraid to walk into the classrooms of those that yeah. are resistant. Mm -hmm. So again. Um, like Shakespeare says it right there, tis better to be brief. You know, be brief. I guess Twitter used to be a lot more brief. That's it's, true. It's it used to only be 140. This, this, yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> quick walkthroughs, like we said, if you just just pop in, let them know you're there. Mm -hmm. you, you might you you might get a bite. You know, you mm -hmm. never know. So again, like Dory says here, just keep swimming. Just keep walking just, is what we yeah, mean. In our case, yes, just keep walking. Just try to hit as many classrooms as possible. In this case, you know, uh, quantity might is going to lead to more quality down the road. The more you hit, the more that they know you're there, mm -hmm. the, the more likely that you're going to be uh, your your appointments are going to get booked up. So again, at first, you mean if you're a brand new tech coach and you're and you're not being booked as often as you would like, um, just be patient with it. I'll share a story of mine. Um, Actually, no, we're going to get to that in a later one. But we do have okay. a question here. Sure. Uh, the question from Leslie, what would you recommend if the district domain currently disallows Google Hangouts and Google Plus? So a lot of times districts don't see educational value to those products. And so sometimes, I mean, it depends on the district. There's some districts that are quite, um, quite tight on things. Um, but sometimes if you show them the educational purpose or how this is going to actually serve teachers and students, uh, sometimes I'll open it up. Uh, I know I was in a district, the district I was in today, where Google Plus was turned off. Um, and I said, do you want me to talk to the district and let them know, oh, no, we'll try. And so teachers, a couple teachers um, said why they wanted Google Plus open, and it was opened within a week. Um, so sometimes that happens. Um, you know, it, it just kind of kind of depends on, on your, your administrators. Yeah. Um yeah, there's a there's a lot of there are ways around it. Uh, Leslie also asked a little bit more. Should you be advocating harder for the use of things like Hangouts and Google Plus? Um, I see that where the where the issues could lie with Hangouts and Google Plus, they, they may see it as a as a um, as an obstacle to productivity. I mean, for 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 us, it's it it really enhances our productivity. Um, so I, I would leave with that. You may want to say, you know, let's open it up for the for the teachers. 
right. and not the students. Mm -hmm. Let the teachers get used to it. And, uh, you know, a lot of times your admin will be more uh, open to letting the adults use it rather than the students. Um, some other ways that you could, uh, you, uh, if you, again, if they're still going to be resistant, um, remind.com is a, is a, is a yeah, real si simple way. Um, there's, um, what's the back channel one that we use at some conferences? I always, I always forget the Selly? name. Not Sally. No. Um, oh, um, today's meet. Today's meet is another is another okay. little back, kind of back channeling way that that's free and usually never blocked by anything. True. True. So, um, yeah, though, though there's some alternatives while you're waiting for uh, the district to open up Google Plus. I'm not sure what the uh, Microsoft equivalent is, but Lamar Treadwell would know. Yes, Lamar Treadwell, good friend of ours. Yes. Uh, but, follow yeah. him on Twitter. Mm -hmm. He is he is our CB Tech Talk resident. Uh, MIE expert. That's right. That's Absolutely. Right. So Absolutely. great question there, Leslie. Hopefully we, we've uh, we've helped a little bit. So again, we've kind of Ooh. touched on yeah, touched we kind of already talked about this already, but, but automate your 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 appointment booking. Catherine touched on uh, one of the real cool features with Google Calendar with the appointment slots. I've talked about using Eventomatic on your um, on your uh, <clears throat> on your website to pop to populate your um, Google Calendar. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the Microsoft um, equivalents are, but um, w whatever way you can automate your booking um, system is, is it's going to save you so much time. So now we're going to get into some of our tech coaching war stories. <laughs> that's right. So the first one we see there is something as a tech coach. I'm sure all of you who are watching, if you're a tech coach, you've probably uh, – seen this before the deer in the headlights look okay i got a great story about this one why don't you go ahead and read up because this happened to me relatively recently by a principal so i had a principal i wa i was walking classrooms and um so i uh walk in a, a classroom and a principal is modeling a lesson for a teacher which is awesome that's a great thing um you know all administrators should do that if they can if they if they well, they should make the time. But anyway, I walked in and the principal said, got the deer, gave me the deer in the headlights look and said, oh, we're not using any tech today. And I thought, I'm not, I'm not like a tech tool teacher first. I'm a teacher first. I care about learning. Um, and so you really have to reiterate with teachers that you are not there to make sure they're using tech. You are there because you want the uh, students to learn. And, you know, I believe a lot of times that can be a mix of high and low tech. Um, and just because I see you doing something low tech, then I can actually suggest something where technology may be appropriate. But um, <coughs> it was it was a very interesting. Uh, we're not doing tech, tech today, you know. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So many times I get during the headlights look and not too long ago, I walked into a um, a class where I, I it was actually a class I walked in for the first time, and it's an, mm. a, an AP teacher. So AP teachers are a whole different animal, at least in my experience. But the first thing you walked in, I was told, "Are you here to evaluate me?" Oh, I go, "No, I just want I just want to see what an AP English class looks like." That's good. That's a good answer. Yeah, I, I just want to see. Yeah, and I just want to see that, that way I can better support you going mm -hmm. in the future. Maybe mm -hmm. I'll, I'll learn a thing or two to help other people. So That's right. just continue. Um, one of my favorite stories to tell is when probably the first semester I was on the job. And I know a lot of you probably have had a similar experience where you are, man, I don't feel loved. I'm bored. Nobody's booking me. Nobody <laughs> knows I'm here. So I, I remember going almost a week without anything. I was just kind of creating resources on my own all day in my office, and nobody would have known I was there or not. So one day I'm like, I really need to see how. Um, how quote unquote unknown am I on this site? So I sat in my, I got there at 8 a.m. until 3.30. I sat and watched YouTube all day. I actually did. And I've told my administrators this and they laugh at it. And they're like, yeah, I just watched YouTube all day. Like the cat you see in the picture. <laughs> Watching videos, just entertaining myself all day. And not once did my phone ring. And I, I just felt so dejected. And that's when I really kind of made that that resolve to be a walking coach. I got to get myself out of here. I got to be out there. I need boots on the ground. I got to be where the rubber meets the road. And it really, um, that really, I guess that that was the low point for me as a tech coach. And from that point, I realized only ways up now. Um, but another great story I have is 
um, during a district walkthrough, our superintendent walked some classrooms and saw that our we had just started pushing Chromebook carts into, uh, we pretty much had gone one to two um, at our middle school, and a lot of those Chromebook carts were collecting dust. And the superintendent looks at me like, well, what are you doing about this? And looks the, and just gave a real kind of tongue lashing to, to the administrator. And as a knee-jerk reaction, the administrator said, okay, I need to solve this problem, and I get it. I don't blame, I don't blame this person, but they were like, hey, all right, so from now on, um, um, Adam's going to report to me about what you guys are, are doing with the Chromebooks. Um, and I'm like, whoa, 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 hold on here. I am not a rat. That is not my job. Right. I go, hold on here. No, anyone think for one second I'm here to spy. On, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not the spy. I'm not a narc. So, I, I kind of. I just kind of almost took control of the meeting for a minute. I go, listen. I will give you a report every week on what I am training these teachers on, mm -hmm. and you can go out and look and see how well it's being, how well it's being implemented. If you have questions, you can go and ask me. But I am not a narc. I'm not going to be telling on teachers, and that's a real easy trap to to fall into, mm -hmm. especially when you're new and you're not sure what, if you mm -hmm. really know what you're doing. But remember, that, you're I, lateral. If, you're lateral yes, with the teachers. We we are on the same level here, and I look back. I'm like, man, I easily could have just. Uh, I'm a new tech coach. I don't want to create new ways. Just do what mm -hmm. I'm told. And I think I wouldn't be here at this webinar right now if I had just gone along with what that you would have lost trust. Yeah, with the administrator yeah, said, and I get it. It, it, it was just a knee-jerk reaction sure. um, to being, you know, getting a little, kind of a tongue lashing from your your administrator from your uh, superintendent. I get that, but I, I I'm very thankful that I had the I had the wherewithal to say, hey, I am not going to be a uh, <clears throat> not going to be a, a narc here. I just I would have lost so much trust. Oh, this is my favorite. Yes. This is this used to happen to me. So once you start walking and being a walking coach, you know, you're there to you're there for you do have a job, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you're there to support teachers to find out what they're doing so you can create contextual uh resources, you know, resources for them and guide them in the in a good direction. But I'd love it when I walk in and they'd say, Oh, I'm so glad you're here, Catherine. Can you watch my class? I have to go to the bathroom. Or even better, even better. Oh, I forgot to make copies. Can you watch my class for 15 minutes while I go make copies? Meanwhile, I'm thinking, uh, didn't we just do a PD where we talked about ditching the copier and going paperless? <laughs> kind of insulting, right? So it does happen. Keep walking, just keep walking, seriously keep walking. It, it gets better. It really does. But that will happen. It will happen. It's happened to both of us. And, and it will happen to you too, if you start walking, but eventually they're going to realize why you're there. Um, the other thing is, a lot, some, have you ever had um, anyone book you for a, um, oh. when a sub is there? So, so often, like we, we plan the lesson and I walk in and boom, there is a sub staring at me. <laughs> On purpose. My blood boils when that happens. And you know what? Now, I, 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 whenever I plan a lesson, I go, are you planning to have a sub? Because if you are, then we need to reschedule. Because mm -hmm. I'm here to coach you on how to use technology and how to uh, really enhance your lesson. I'm not here just to teach a tool and just be a – just fill in the blanks. Not going to do that. That's Sorry. Right. Just not. We're paid way too much money to yes. be a sub. Yep. We are, cert we are yeah. certificated Th those teachers. Those subs are paid to do a job and uh, let them do their job. I'm here to coach you, right. not coach the sub. It's that simple. Um, going back to the ditch that copier, um, that was one of the things that I, I developed early on in my journey as a tech coach. Uh, I remember as being an everyday classroom teacher, hating that mm. damn copy machine. Because nine times out of ten, I had to fight for it. And there's a line, and you have and to make it there early. I had, and then I had a budget on paper. Yep. And then we're getting yelled at for making too many copies. I bought my own paper. And then, yep. Uh, and, then, <clears throat> and then there's like it runs out of toner, and then one tiny little speck of paper somewhere deep inside the copier, <laughs> and that convoluted schematic shows you where it's at, and you can't find it, and it doesn't want to work. Right. And so many lessons were just ruined because I couldn't make my my damn copy. So, um, as a tech coach. I was given actually 
a lot of freedom to go out and learn ways to to go paperless. Now, paperless is not the goal, mm -mm. but it's that copy is about making yourself more efficient so you have time to plan more empowering learning experiences. So set copy is a series of sessions I do uh, talking about how to use tools such as the, the Duelist Chrome extension, Doc Hub, uh, Google Docs, uh, Google Classroom, Note Anywhere, and a variety of other tools to make you more efficient. And um, really, that, that has really just made my life a lot easier as a teacher. And it, it really helps build a lot of um, trust among uh, the staff because they're like, hey, you, you, you're bringing something here that, that's really going to help me. Um, <clears throat> so. Well, we, we definitely want to thank everyone for being here. And uh, if there are any more questions, um, we can certainly add more questions on the live chat here. Uh, definitely connect with us on Twitter. And some of, some of you already have, and we have uh, followed you back. That's right. So um, I, I would say last, uh, last thoughts on this is just go walking. Yep. Just be a walker. I had to change my wardrobe when I became a walking <laughs> coach. Um, as a classroom teacher, I, I wore a collared shirt and tie. When I started becoming a coach, I continued wore that wardrobe. But then I started getting blisters. <laughs> I started wearing out my dress shoes. And I'm like, I, I need to change my wardrobe. Mm -hmm. And actually, I, so it was much more fun to come, come to work with a, a polo shirt and some jeans and some comfortable shoes mm -hmm. because I was walking so much. And, yep. you know, if uh, it, it was a good excuse not to have to dress up every day. <laughs> so that, that's just me. All right. Well, thank you so much. We'll, we'll watch the chat here to see if there's any other uh, questions. All right. All right. So, thanks again for joining us. And uh, I'm Adam. And I'm Catherine. And, I'm Catherine. and, and we, we are. We are at a cat. Hashtag at a Don't forget CV Tech Talk, 7 p.m. every Wednesday. That's right. And I see Katie's Pacific. putting some um, uh, links to upcoming we webinars. Yes, um, guys, thank you so much. What, uh, first of all, such clever analogies throughout the whole thing. I just love it. I'm cracking up because I'm also a huge Walking Dead fan. So nice. I'm like, loving it over here. Uh, I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> but thank you so much. So many amazing ideas. It looks like everyone got so much um, out of this webinar. This is why I've been so looking forward because I knew that they would. Um, those of you who are still here with us, hang out with me just for a minute. Uh, and I'm going to give you a link to make sure that you can get a contact hour certificate for attending today's webinar. Um, before I give you that, sorry, this picture is a little blurry. I couldn't get it any higher resolution um, when they sent it to me. But um, anyway, our playground uh, proposals are open. I believe they opened up today. And they will be open through, let me double check myself here, March 19th. So you have uh, from now until March 19th to submit your uh, playground proposal. If you are gonna be at ISTE, um, please, please submit your proposal, especially if it was something that got denied. If you apply to present at a larger session at ISTE and it got denied, those margins and what we are allowed to accept when we go through playground proposals and what ISTE accepts are so, so small. Um, so, so many great quality proposals get cut just from a sheer number of proposals that are submitted. So please, please, it doesn't mean that it was a bad session. It's probably a great session. So please submit that if it's relating to coaching, submit it um, to our playground. The link is there. I shared it in the chat so you can uh, submit that to us. And this year's theme is going to be, um, we're kind of taking a little play on construction uh, and having tools. Tools, we got them as tech coaches. So. That's the theme this year. So please submit those to us so we can have another amazing uh, playground session this year. And you may even be one of the webinar presenters that we ask to present next year. And then lastly, your webinar feedback. So if you'd like to receive a contact hour certificate, one, this gives us feedback on the process um, and how the webinar went. And then you also have the option to uh, include your name and email address double, triple check that name and email address because I do nothing. I use Autocrat and it generates a certificate and emails to whatever email you include on that form if you want it. So um, go ahead and fill that out. 
Next month's webinar, I did already share this in the webinar chat, um, including the link to register. But next month will be March 13th, same time, 8, 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and that is hard hats, ball caps, and sombreros, the many hats ed tech coaches wear to meet the diverse needs of all learners. So uh, we have another very fun presentation lined up for you in just a couple weeks. Um, so if there are any additional questions, please throw those in the chat. Adam, Catherine, and I will stick around for just another minute or two to see if any more um, questions come in. But if not, thank you so much for taking time out of your Tuesday evening to join us. Uh, Add a Cat is awesome. And side note, I have to tell you too that I absolutely love the ship name that you're ro totally rocking here. I love it. Um, but so thank you everyone for joining. Adam and Catherine, thank you. Thank you so much on behalf of the leadership team for presenting for us. Awesome stuff. Our pleasure. Thank you. Our thank you. pleasure. Yes, thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> Done it.